Tonight I'm making a sheet pan dinner that is ridiculously easy and delicious too. I'm going to start out by getting the oven going at 400 degrees. Then I'm going to get out a sheet pan. This is an aluminum pan, but steel pan works just fine too. The important part here is to line it with parchment paper. I used aluminum foil for this kind of stuff for a lot of years and it was a huge mistake. I wish I had discovered parchment paper sooner. I never use aluminum foil for this kind of cooking. In fact, I never put aluminum foil underneath anything. I put aluminum foil on top only. For underneath, parchment paper. Nothing will stick to it and that's going to be the only pan that we're going to get dirty here making this dish tonight. Next I'm going to put this wet paper towel down on the counter. That's going to keep my cutting board from slipping around and we're going to cut up some veggies and meat here. I've got some smoked sausage here. Uh, you can use whatever uh, sausage that you like. Um, brats would be good. I've made it with brats. Really any kind of link sausage that you can slice up uh, would be good in this. And that easy open packaging on these sausages is terrible. I just stab the knife right through the middle and slice it like that and pull the sausage out that way. But for this meal I like to cut the sausage into bias shapes. That means turning the knife at an angle so you get these uh, pointy ends on each slice and what that'll do, those little ends will get uh, kind of brown and crispy in the oven and that'll just add an extra layer of flavor and texture. It's really good. I really like that. You can cut them in just straight up discs or whatever kind of shape that you think you might like, but I think when you cut them on a bias like this, those crispy edges are really good. But this sausage has got plenty of fat and flavor in it. We don't need to add any uh, seasonings or oils. Directly onto the pan it goes. And I'm just going to arrange them so that they all have uh, you know, a big flat surface of that sausage touching the pan there. Next up is a butternut squash. That's the beauty part of this meal is you can kind of change it up depending on what you like. You know, if you don't like squash, use something else. Sweet potatoes are good on this meal. I've had that. Or just regular potatoes would be good too. But we like butternut squash quite a bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and peel this butternut squash with my knife. You can use a vegetable peeler to peel the butternut squash. But the th skin is kind of thick. And you have to go over it. Uh, probably at least twice with a vegetable peeler to get all that white skin off. Knife works pretty good here. I'm going to slice that squash uh, lengthwise from top to bottom. And this squash has a pretty small little seed pocket here, which is kind of nice. But I'm just going to scrape those seeds out with a spoon. There's a little membrane that lines the uh, seed pocket there. And uh, if you can get the spoon up underneath that, that, that whole bunch of seeds just comes out pretty easily. But sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain. But I'm going to go ahead and chop up this squash into about one inch size pieces. They don't need to be all the same, but uh, about a one inch size uh, seems to work pretty good for this cooking method. And with those chunks of squash in a bowl, I'm just going to add a little bit of canola oil and some salt and pepper. And then just give those a toss and get those mixed around all coated in uh, that oil and salt and pepper. I like to throw it like this, but obviously, you know, use your hands or a spoon, whatever works for you. But once those squashes are all nice and coated in that oil and seasoning, I'm going to go ahead and pour those onto the tray there next to the meat. Kind of move those over, snug them up next to the sausages there. And they don't all have to be touching the bottom of the pan. They can be stacked on top of each other a little bit. It'll work out in the end. And next up is the cabbage. I think cabbage is probably one of the most underrated vegetables out there. It's so cheap and it's delicious and it's good for you. It's just so underrated. I'm going to make some cabbage wedges here that are going to go on this pan tonight. I'm just going to use half this cabbage tonight and I'll save the rest for another day. And I'm going to cut these into wedges, just turning my knife to, uh, to the proper angle to create a wedge shape. And what that'll do is give a nice flat surface on at least two sides to where that uh, cabbage wedge can uh, sit on our sheet pan. And you could do like one inch thick discs too. I've done that before. That works good, but I'm doing wedges tonight. So before I put the cabbage on the pan, I'm going to take some of those uh, oiled and seasoned uh, squash pieces and kind of move them over and just kind of move them around on the parchment. Get some of that oil and seasoning on the parchment where the cabbage is going to go. And then I'll move that squash back over where it was and put the cabbage down on that oiled and seasoned parchment. Next I'm going to take that bowl that I used for the squash pieces and it's still got oil and seasoning left there in the bottom. I'm just going to pick that up with a brush and brush the rest of that oil and salt and pepper onto the top of the cabbage wedges there. And if I didn't have enough oil left in the bottom of that bowl, obviously I would just kind of drizzle some on top of that cabbage. You want to have it oiled a little bit, otherwise it will get kind of dried out in the oven. And I'll go ahead and throw on a little bit more salt and pepper just right on top of those cabbage wedges there. So now the sheet pan with the sausage and the squash and the cabbage is going to go in that 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. 
So after 30 minutes, I'm going to pull that out of the oven. As you can see, the sausage is starting to brown up a little bit, as is the squash and the cabbage. But the squash and the cabbage is not fully cooked through yet. Uh, so I'm going to give these cabbage wedges a flip and just flip those over. And with the spatula, I'm just going to mix the squash and the sausage chunks all together and just kind of flip them over randomly. And some of that flavorful fat that has been leaching out of the sausage is going to kind of get mixed together with the squash. And I'm just going to mix them all together and they're going to do their second half of the roasting together. And back in the oven it goes for another 30 minutes. 30 minutes later and we've got a big sheet pan full of delicious meat and vegetables here. As you can see the sausage got some browning on those uh, thin edges like I talked about at the beginning. And the squash even picked up a little caramelization on the, on the parts that were touching the pan. And the squash should be soft. You should be able to easily just push a fork through it. If not, put it back in. But this squash is done. And the cabbage is also tender and just got a little bit of browning on those uh, edges. And I think if you wanted to serve some rice with this mix, that'd be pretty good. But uh, we're going carb-free tonight, just meat and vegetables. And a nice little pat of butter on the cabbage slice really takes it to the next level. The butter will melt down in all those little crevices on the cabbage wedge. This is a delicious meal that's super simple to prepare. Just about 10 minutes of cutting up meat and vegetables. Throw it in the oven for an hour and out comes a delicious dinner. Hopefully this recipe will give you some ideas of things you can do with uh, your favorite meat or vegetables on a sheet pan. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.